Hi everyone, uh, welcome back. This is uh, part four of the Retro Studio. And I, I think by request, I'm gonna do an episode on lighting. And I'm just gonna do this live, not narrated over time-lapse because it's gonna be quick and just showing you as I work. Um, so here we are, we've got the scene zeroed out. So it's all zeroed out here, and um, I'll just first go through my kernel settings, which I usually just copy across. Um, I have like a preset, and then I just bring it across, but it's just the same every time. It's a large amount of samples, which I'll change depending on the scene. Um, max depth, this will deal with how it goes through um, glass, how many levels, and preview samples. This is just a large uh, time limit, so it doesn't run out. Ray threshold and um, glossy preserve I may change depending on the scene and light sample set to 4 but you increase it the more you have um, everything else is off at the moment uh, noise threshold is here I can push it lower and I may adjust these depending on render times but we want to get the best render and we're going to render overnight so a lot of these things are unimportant I get questions all the time about like how long does your render take to render or and like most of the time even in commercial work i don't care how long it takes to render because after i'm so quick it's not going to take like six hours like a corona render but still i want to organize my work so i have time to render overnight so it gives it the best time to just um be the cleanest but you can adjust these or sometimes i use topaz denoise if i need to go really quick um especially with um animations so a lot of good resources, the FSNOR manual, which is not the most up to date, but it does give you a sense of like, you know, a lot of the key errors you can have and things how to improve them. Um, so definitely worth having a look there. And um, okay, so that's kernel settings. We've just got like a really blank scene here and we've got interactive on with enabled with real time geometry. So if we move things, it'll update. I always set my two in advanced. Um, this is a new change, but I, you know, I've been trying out some linear renders with post-processing color, but that's something for uh, another episode, another time. So here we go with advanced. The first thing we're going to do is definitely bring in an environment. So I've got in this scene, after trialing a few different ones, I tried. This is from Polyhaven, or what used to be called HDRI Haven. This is um, um, this is a just a nice. I like these. Um, you know, you got to try different ones. How what I'm looking for here, what I'm putting in is a little bit of softness in the sun on the edges. It's not too bright. Um, this is perfect for my scene. I can tweak it, but this is this is what I'm looking for. Not too. Um, you know, if there's clear blue sky, you know, it's just a little intense for interior sometimes. So I like to soften it out. And um, so you can just, I've just got like a whole bunch of them downloaded from um, Polyhaven. Um, I'll link these down in the description as well. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I've got it here loaded up in my um, material editor straight in there. There we go. Okay, just smooth things around here a bit. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do is probably adjust the exposure. It's like very low. And we're going to adjust the exposure here and plus the kernel exposure. Um, this does frustrate me. If you adjust this kernel exposure, it restarts the render. That used to be great with uh, F-Stop. You only used to, it used to not restart the render, but if you keep these two values uh, close together, it gives you the best render time. So it is a bit of a pain to, I wish you could just hit lock and it would just, you know, stay together. Um, so this is not bad. Um, we're just saving here a second. Okay. So when, it, when the HRI comes in, it's going to come in facing the wrong way. Like this is even, this is, I've zeroed out here, the rotation, but even this is good. I actually like that quite a lot. Um, so you just need to rotate it around. You can get plug into like have an environmental slider. So, but I wanted to shoot through the blinds here. So I just rotate it until I found a direction I like. Um, it's got this nice glow here. It's all good. 
and here the gamma is a trick you can do if you wanna you a 2.2 is where it should come in but if you want to like make it harder like brighter and a harder light um, then you can make it lower than that if you want to soften the hdri you go 2.5 softens it out see less bright more soft edging but for this one it looks like 2.2 is good so the idea with lighting here is we want to slowly build up and adjust it's no there's no like hard and fast rules here i'm just adjusting these values until i like what i see so this is why it's so important to look at photographs try to duplicate things uh that's a really good personal project if you're just starting out is get a photo of an interior space you like model the space you know and then st try to match the lighting it's difficult and it will teach you a lot um and I mean, that's going to help a lot for your understanding of lighting and what you need to do. You need to like spend time looking at other render at other images. And, you know, that's part of learning how to do CG is like becoming visually um, conscious of like how light works all the time. I'm looking at light. I'm looking, how's it working? Why does this look good? Things like that, just even in real life. And um, the other thing I can recommend is getting a, a camera and taking lots of photos, taking photos of light, looking at light, how's it working, you know, what looks good. It's always like an education I'm learning all the time. Um, anyway, I digress. Here's the next thing. We're going to uh, enable my favorite LUT. Every, almost every scene, I use the same LUT. And I do that because I just find this Kim Amlin photographic lot. I found it one day and it just blew me away. It's the perfect amount of contrast for me and color. And overall, I just find it, um, it just gets the right thing. So this was originally on a forum. I didn't, I don't know where I found it, but um, it's a Corona forum. And um, Kim Amlin, also known as Dubcat, put these out. And um, I've linked, I've, I'll link to this post where you can download them here. This is just the photographic LUTs one. There's also one for a linear. And I'll try to just link to a direct path as well. So you can have those if you want. And you can see already, like the difference with the LUT is just enormous. Like without the LUT, it's just super, you're gonna struggle to get the look you want. So here we go, 20, 20, everything else is at, at normal values so far. And so if we, we have to move around the scene because we want to have like a, each camera should have its own settings, you know, slight adjustments depending on when you're angled. And the other thing I may do is like increase the gamma slightly if I'm just finding it like a little too dark, but I may do that like right now looks fine, but I may want to have some more contrast. So if I increase the contrast here, okay, like that's that's much darker. It's too dark, too much contrast. But then we can offset that with a bit of gamma, brings it back up, a little more contrasty. And then the burn value is like changes how the um, the sunlight. If you go minus values, it'll like lower how bright the sun is. So, I think that's a bit too harsh. So there you go. So, you know, we went, that's, that's basically what I'm doing. I'm, when I start, I'm trying to look, get a look that I like, and I can't really teach you that because it's me just learning over the years, sort of what I want the scene to look like, you know, what, what's in my head or what uh, it sort of looks like. Um, so you need to develop that yourself, which is definitely worth something developing. And um, you know, we check it from different angles and stuff like that. And let's see, what else can we do? And the other thing that you'll need to take, be aware of is when you're setting your cameras is depth of field because every camera is going to have depth of field but what i see a lot of people doing is just pushing it way too high like if you're in a super bright space and you're not super close up and then they have like 
we go back to that camera, what is it? Four. This camera here. And then I see people. I'm just gonna go to my camera. So I'm on eight F number here. I see people have like a ridiculously low F number. Then like the background here is gonna be super blurry. But like that's not how a that's not how a camera works. And this is, goes back to that thing about shooting on a camera. You know what I mean? You'll understand that depth of field just doesn't work like that. You know what I mean? Like this just doesn't look right. Like there's too much depth of field for such a wide shot with enough light in it. You know what I mean? So let's push that back up. Much more natural. You do want a little bit of blurring in the back there. And that's where this, um, this blur and sharpen come in. I think that's the F-Storm walk. You know what I mean? How it processes the, the sharpness. And um, you can, obviously when you're working, you can set your depth of field here. Uh, I usually set my depth of field per camera. And then you can turn this tone mapping on and off, depending on like each shot. I try to also sometimes, depending on the scene, I lower the blur power down to 0.01 or and, or I just turn it off. It just depends. Like sometimes I think the the glare is a little too much in F Storm, so it just depends. The other thing that will really help your lighting is composition. And composition is um to be honest, I just don't think it's something that can be taught as much. Yes, there are rules, but in honesty, you should just be like setting up cameras and trying out different compositions. What I did to improve my composition skills was I got a bunch of renders, a bunch of images, and I just looked at how they composed shots. Like if there was a table and a lamp, like how are they spacing things? And I just kept looking at different shots. I had a folder full of inspiration and I would look over them again and again and again. And I would try to like model the same similar scene. It doesn't have to be fully lit, fully perfectly done. Just try different compositions. And I found that that really helped me um, nail down my composition. I'm still learning, there's still lots to learn all the time. Uh, I really struggle composing a landscape shot. For some reason, my brain just loves portrait um, dimension. It just all the time, even on my camera, I just always gravitate towards that. I find composing that um, like that easier, even square composition I find easier to compose um, it's just I don't know what it is I think I need to practice some more composing in the um, sort of video dimensions and um, so that's it if I didn't cover something please feel free to like leave a comment and I'll try to pick it up in the next video uh, probably resume um, what I was doing which is probably modeling the kitchen next and I've also been playing around with um, um, some film simulation plugins, which, um, let me see if I can bring that up. So that was just using a um, plugin called Film Convert, which is you render out like a very linear render and then let it process it for the coloring. I'm just sort of testing that out because I shoot on a Fujifilm camera which has film simulations and sort of changed my mind about color and I'm trying to simulate that a bit. So I'm just testing those sort of things. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'll do a video on that, but um, still early days on that. So I hope this helped. Um, if there's anything you'd like to know, oh, there's actually one more very important thing I completely forgot about. Uh, sorry, it's white balance, which is a very critical component of of setting up a, a scene. Um, if you adjust your warmth here, which it is not doing because I've got, there it is. You can see we completely changed the mood. Um, I like to set my renders are generally warmer. Um, I just find it like that's just what I like to look at. You can go a more neutral coloring. You can just completely just 
neutralize that, even though this this whole scene does have a lot of warmth in it already. You just neutralize it out with a bit of oh, wrong way. No, I find it just looks a bit cold. Every time I take away the warmth, it looks cold to me. Anyway, so that's all. Um, give me a like. Give me a comment if you have anything to say. All right, thanks.